Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery, Part 372. Our lesson title today is The Reality of the Nations. We find the Bible is filled with the word nations. <clears throat> we want to take a look at the principle dealing with this. which is, Scripture teaches, the Scripture sometimes refers to the term nations as beings who existed before the creation of Adamic man. They were under the authority of Lucifer. Ezekiel 31, verse 6. Fowls of the heaven made their nest, nest in his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. And we see, of course, this is a time in which Lucifer became vice regent over the secondary creation. His shadow dominated all things, his influence was spread throughout the creation. What do you understand from the use of the term great? Uh, the word there, basic in the Hebrew, is mighty. So it's talking about those that are more powerful than others. Okay. <coughs> Principle. Scripture indicates these nations' habitations were all disrupted <coughs> along with the rest of the secondary creation at the fall of Lucifer. Ezekiel 31, verse 16. I made the nations to shake. The word shake there is literally indulate. At the sound of his fall, when I cast them down to hell, with them that descend into the pit, and all the trees of Eden, the choice and the best of Lebanon, all the drink water shall be comforted in the neither parts of the earth. So what we find when Lucifer fell, the entirety of the secondary creation was affected. And most greatly, those that were most greatly affected were the nations that dwelt under his shadow. They were totally disrupted in their ability to function was interrupted because they had reached a point where they were so dependent upon him that they moved in tandem when he moved. They picked up his influence and um, his influence stretched throughout the entirety of the secondary creation. <coughs> Still does. We'll continue until the scripture tells us the prototokos ascends to its position of authority and then it says that the nations will no longer flow to unto him they will be under the influence of the sons of god now <coughs> scripture indicates <coughs> the nations currently occupy habitations in the lower heavens, hidden regions of the surface world, such as mountains, valleys, the Amazon region, and the subterranean regions, which are all connected by tunnels and portals. The current system of the nations has been disrupted but it still functions. They're interconnected. Uh, and as you can see with occasional UFO sightings and trackings, 
they'll see vehicles come up out of the ocean and go immediately into the heavens on a tra trajectory, on a course for a destination in the lower heavens. There are tunnels, there are vortexes that are consistently in operation connecting the different areas, habitations of the nations. It still functions. Turn to Revelation, the fifth chapter. Let me ask you a question, Mr. Jones. Yes. Okay, so they, they're <laughs> able to function, to use these portals to, to enter and appear wherever, they des wherever they're desirous of. Mm -hmm. Is this God's technology or is this Lucifer's technology? That's God's technology. God designed the secondary creation to be interconnected. Lucifer just corrupted the ability of the inhabitants to current at that point depend upon God as their authority. And he changed the system, but he didn't change the, the uh, dimensions and function of the system. Because Elohim designed the system as maximum function. Lucifer just took over the function and uh, engineered his own organization so it would turn to him rather than the Father. So yes. is it in the same condition as he created it? No. Oh, okay. No. No. So it's been corrupted. But it's still operative, yes. Yeah. <coughs> Revelation 5th chapter, verse 3. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, is able to open the book, neither to look thereon. So you're given a picture here of the position and the secondary creation of the nations. Their habitations are in the lower heavens, they're in the subterranean region, and in their regions on the surface. That's interesting. So it's, you can't even look at the book. Okay? That's by God's design because it's too holy? Sure. Sure. Anyone can look at the book, Prototokis. Why? Because they have been delegated by the Father to be able to do that. Nobody else has. Let's go on. <coughs> Scripture describes some of the nations that interacted with the Adamic man it influences activities on the earth. This is what we want to focus on. Some of the nations, non-humans, that interacted with the human race and influenced the activities of mankind on the earth. Genesis, the sixth chapter, verse four. We read about the giants. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. Now, we're leaving out the italics. The same mighty men which were of old men of renown. What organized religion teaches because of the italics is that the emphasis is on the children of the sons of God and the daughters of men. The subject of the passage of Scripture is not the children, it's the giants. The giants were men of old. The giants were around when the sons of God and the daughters of men cohabited. The giants were men of renown. The human race was scared to death of the giants because the giants eclipsed them in every way. They were stronger, smarter, they were. They lived uh, rough, durable uh, uh, conditions that the human race couldn't survive in. Yes. Were they still made of afar? No. 
say it's made of robust, Adoma. More robust, yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. Claim it. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are of the earth, but they are natural products of the earth. Yeah, they, the human race is an artificial product of the earth. That is, he's put together in such a way mm -hmm. that he, um, his beginning was not contingent with planetary existence. His beginning was predicated off of a need that was met for a particular time. The giants and the other races come with the earth. They start in the subterranean regions, they cohabit all the areas of the earth to dominate it. Yes? So are you saying that the giants were not formed? They were just, they, they come from the earth? Mm-hmm. They were not formed? No. 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 Man's the only thing that basically has that type of beginning. Man was formed, woman was built. That's the Hebrew term. Giants weren't like that. They. They are basically uh, indigenous beings who are not given a mandate to take care of the ground. So the earth released the giants? Under the ages of YHV. Yes. So they were, as uh, Flora informed us, they're grown from the earth. Well, it would be the same <coughs> way they were called forth by, y when you see YHVH, bringing the animals and the birds and everything from the earth. He didn't bring them in the way the same way he brought man. Sure. He molded man sure. and then he did the, he just brought forth the other creatures. It's the same way the giants right. were brought into existence. But the point was that they come from the subterranean region through to the surface. Okay, was it because of Elohim when David was being formed in the lowest parts of the earth. He's being formed. Okay. No. 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 Being created. He wasn't formed. I don't want to spoke him into existence. Okay, well my my parts were not hid from thee mm. when I was made in and secret. The substance curiously wrought. Was wrought by the earth. But the race of a Ad Adamic man was spoken into existence. <coughs> by him. Let us make man. Yes. From what? From the stuff that the earth is weaving. He takes a substance, the animals came from earth. So, when, when Adam was put together, Aphar is the substance, is that the earth producing Adam? Or was that why? No, the, the earth, the soil was there. White VH took the soil, molded it, and then breathed the knife into it man becomes a living, breathing soul. He created man. He didn't speak him into existence. He molded him. Yeah. And then he animated him. But he used Aphar, not, not, not soil. Aphar is the soil. It's, it's the dust. leavings of the clay. Leavings of the soil. Is he say, are you saying the um, Aphar is the leavings of a doma? Is that what you mean? I was thinking it's less than a doma. And, well, leavings, I mean... Yeah. That's why you call me, leave it. Yes, it's the lowest class of earth. Right. The, the poorest quality. Yeah, that's why it says dust, ashes, ashes, sure. dust, and that's clay. It's okay, so the dust. earth is bringing forth the soil to it? <coughs> yes. Not, not bringing forth the earth is the clay through which YHVH brings forth the man. It's the substance that enables man to function in this environment. <clears throat> he goes. He just goes off the off the ground and molds from the soil a particular type of soil, <clears throat> the 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 ash part of the soil, the clay part of the soil, the leavings, if you will, of the soil, and he molds a humanoid figure. Then he takes that humanoid figure and he breathes life into it and makes it stand up and it begins to function. The essence of what the man is composed of, which Bridgeface tells him. Dust thou art, and the dust thou shalt go. Jonesy, we've heard so many, so many descriptions from Scripture that you've read to us that Adam didn't. Ha he would have trouble passing an IQ test, like Donald Trump, I think. But we start to understand now that the Earth 
brought forth Adam to till the soil, not work on brain surgery, not do a functional, you know, diagram of, you know, just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm straight. I, I, why, why didn't the Earth say to Y3H, just, just make it rain? You know, don't, don't trouble me with this dust. <laughs> didn't this. have anything to do with it. That's like you going into um, a dumpster, which is the leavings. And you go through and see if there's anything that you can use. He went to, the, he went to this region <clears throat> where he could see the A4, and he said, I can use that. Man, Adam, the name is connected with the soil. He is nothing more than a soil tiller. The giants don't radically, the other races radically different. They are components of the Earth itself. Earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, leaving Adam to one side for a minute, leaving uh, uh, the humans to the side for one moment, all these nations that we're referring to, which appear in the interior, on the surface, and so on and so forth, at the point that White Vietch called them forth, they were spirit, and in the calling forth, they pretty much appeared in flesh is I guess the yes. only way you can describe yes. it. There is no molding, there's no breathing, no, no, there's no, no, no taking no. ribs and you know, all, no, all no, that no. stuff. Although they are air breathers, they have substance similar to humans. Right. But the point I'm, I want to focus on is the cooling forth, which is a similarity, it's nowhere near it, don't get me wrong, yeah. of Genesis 127 yes. in Elohim speaking out. Yes. So YHVH has been given the ability to call what exists in the spiritual world into the physical and to form that from the spiritual into the physical. Yes. Yes. But it's interesting to me that he does it in the calling forth in the in, in a similar manner that Elohim does it. Yeah, because it's patterned after Elohim. Yes. Yes. So we understand from, from, from what you've just said, no other um, family of angelic beings is able to perform that function. Because of course they weren't ready to do so. Lucifer process. would have loved to be able oh, to do something like yeah. that. No. Uh, basically, the idea is, but when you focus on the difference between the human race and the other nations, the human race is the lowest of the low because of its designed function. It was never created to be a planetary inhabitant is created to be a custodian in <coughs> a relationship to the soil. Mm. And you know this is true because humans today have convinced themselves that they are far superior intellectually to giants. They do, trust me. If you if you look at any any article, <laughs> I've read a lot about giants mm. and the way that they are presented. Mm -hmm. Humans look at them as if they're Neanderthals or Cyclops. Yeah, well, that's because they don't have really have anything to compare to. Yeah. All they are comparing to is their own concept of right. what the giants were. Right. Yes. We're going to get way off there, but okay. So now, there seems to be in the scientific realm, the larger the brain, the more capacity seems that the brain can go mm -hmm. be expected to go through. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and that goes. Is that Scientifically proven? Is it? A, is it an anomaly? Is it a? Is a regularity? Is that what they've concluded because of them measuring the size and then the capacity of the of the beings or the life form? It's purely a human oriented um, measuring stick. The Bible never even mentions the word brain. The Bible mentions the spirit inside of the being. A large brain of itself, all the brain is is a switchboard mm. between the spirit and the, the physical. <clears throat> a large brain has a particular function <clears throat> for a particular purpose. You can have light, which doesn't is not corporeal, functioning and sentiency. It doesn't have any brain, but it has intelligence. When they try to direct light 
in a particular way, light automatically goes, always, always, always takes the shortest path from its origin to its destiny. You cannot manip manipulate light to go where you want it to go. Light's going to go where it desires to go, where it's being directed to go that's programmed into it. Everything has sentiency. The brain of whatever it is they're looking at, they don't even know the total function of the brain. Mm -hmm. They know certain aspects of it, and that's it. They cannot gauge the utility, the use of a brain, because they do not acknowledge the spiritual makeup of the being that the brain belongs to. Mm -hmm. The inference here is the spirit of the being determines the size of the brain and the brain's function. The human race never, never had a yardstick that was accurate to measure anything because they measure the things in a corner somewhere. They can't see the overall picture because they deny the overall picture. The overall picture has to include God. You can't have purpose and understanding unless you include God. They don't. So they are learning things. Learning things. Ever learning, never coming to the knowledge of uh, truth. <clears throat> in the human, they try to regulate genius intellect from um, a, um, a pattern of intellectual capacity. If you, you have the intellect of this, 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 and this that puts you in genius scale, and you're, only, you're only analyzing a certain part of the individual. Genius lies in the spiritual makeup of the individual. All genius is, is the ability of that soul to access the fullness of its capacity to function in the physical realm. Einstein was a genius. Why? Because he had the ability to comprehend things from his spirit and he proved what he comprehended through calculus. Beethoven, Mozart, all the uh, artistic painters had a genius in a certain way because their spirit could be accessed by the physical and manifest in the physical. Nothing to do with the brain, it had to do with the spirit. They took Einstein's brain when he died <coughs> and they tried to um, they <laughs> <laughs> duplicate the aspects of what made him a genius, right. why he was able to do right. it. They did the wrong thing. <coughs> they didn't catch his brain, they didn't ever gotten his soul. But be that as it may, let's go on. We're looking at the giants. You'll find some very interesting things. The giants are men of old, ancient. They, they, they were around long before the human race was brought forth on the earth. They go back to the Luciferian era. There were races of giants. By the time you look at it, turn to Numbers 13. Verse 33. The Bible has a lot to say about the giants. Numbers 13, verse 33. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Enoch, which came of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. The giants existed in families, as families, clans, and nations. <coughs> this is men of renown. <coughs> so at the, even at the time of the Israelites, they had a healthy respect and fear of the giants because they knew the giants were superior to them. Only through YHVH 
were they able to overcome the giants? Yes. Were they able to communicate with the giants or would they not even try? Sure, they could communicate with them. Sure. So they spoke language? Oh, sure. Yeah. Definitely. <coughs> Principle. Scripture teaches, after the flood, the giants repopulated much of the land of Canaan. Who gave them the land of Canaan? YHVH. And had to be driven out by YHVH. Deuteronomy, second chapter, verse 9 to 11. <coughs> The Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee their land for a possession, because I have given it, have given Ar unto the children of Lot for a possession. The so YHVH has given the lands to the descendants of <coughs> Lot descendants of Abraham before he gives them the land the land was already in the possession of the giants verse 10 the Imams dwell therein dwelt therein in time past a people great and many and tall as the Anakim so you have the different families of the giants in which also were accounted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites called them Imims. The Horims also dwelt in Seir before time, but the children of Esau succeeded them. When they had destroyed them from before them and dwelt in their stead, as Israel did unto the land of his possession, which the Lord gave unto them. Now rise up, said I, and get you over the brook of Zered. So we went over the brook of Zered. <clears throat> so what we find here, the place was filled with families of giants when the Israelites went into the land of Canaan, promised land. The giants had dwelt there <clears throat> for many, many, many periods of time. Why? Because YHVH gave it to them after the flood. You say, well, after the flood, how did he give it? Because they came back to the surface. Before the flood, they just went underground. The human race was the only one that got wiped out. And after it was over, the giants surfaced again, and YHVH gave them possessions of the earth. Then also, he gives <coughs> the earth to the descendants of Noah. Why was this done? The hand of Elohim the hand of Elohim. We see this <clears throat> in another passage of scripture if we want to turn to Genesis the 15th chapter verse 16 Verses 15 and 16, Genesis chapter 15. Uh, Elohim talking to Abraham about the things that are going to happen 400 years in the future when Abraham's descendants come out of Egypt. Thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, 
thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they, his descendants, shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. The Amorites are people that live in the land given to them by YHVH. Notice what he says, the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Now we have a dichotomy here, there's a problem here. And we begin to see a picture emerging, now this is what I gather, I'm not saying, don't get me wrong, I'm not yes. saying this is a definite, but I'm giving you what I infer from the scriptures, is that understood? I love the qualification, it's excellent. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I believe that it was Elohim that told YHVH to give the earth to the descendants of Adam. I believe YHVH had initially given the earth back to the giants that had it originally. Are you talking about at the flood? Not in inception. Yes. Yes, the flood or yes in yes, inception. Yes, the flood. Right, you okay. can't, man was given given the earth. Right. And no sons of Noah were given rule of the okay. earth after the flood, <coughs> not before. Mm. And they were told to <coughs> take dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, this, that, and the other. After the flood, <coughs> when the ark was settled on Mount Arayat, and man was coming forth, I believe the YHVH had already given the earth to the giants mm. because they were already settled in Canaan, they were already settled in these other regions. Man, when man comes into those that land, they are already there. How'd they get there? Well, they sure didn't get there during the flood. They got there after the flood. Well, how is it they were in particular areas? Because those areas were given to them. Elohim says the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Therefore, they're going to stay in the land another 400 years. That's what he tells Abraham. Why? Because <coughs> they had been given right to that land after the flood. So, when YHVH tells Joshua, uh, Moses to, not, not so much Moses, Joshua, um, go into this land, destroy them, their giants, kill them, is the destroying and killing the result of the overriding of Elohim to giving the giants the land? Well, basically, the, the, the destruction wasn't so much on the giants. It was on the other renegade humans. The giants are just being told to drive them out. Okay. Uh, again, what you have is a mandate that Israel has from YHVH take the land. I'm going to enable you to take it over from them. Why? Because Elo, uh, because YHV has told, been told by Elohim, these people are going to inherit the land. Right. He never gives credit to Elohim no. for doing anything. He takes it, gives the impression that he's the one that initiated this decision. Well, if he initiated that decision, he would have never given it to the giants in the first place. He would have waited the giants went there and said, no, you can't have this. This is for my people Israel. No, he doesn't do that. they got to drive them out. YHV, well, Elohim, we see a picture here. Elohim says, they, the Amorites are going to be in this land for 400 years. The iniquity of the Amorites has not yet come to the full. What does that say? That says they're being driven out because of iniquity. If they didn't commit iniquity, they would never be driven out. They're giving the same thing as the humans. Israel got kicked out because of what? Iniquity. They're given the promised land. As long as they abide in the promised land, they're going to stay in the promised land and flourish. When they deviate from God, God's plan, God's will, God's way, they're wide open to be evicted. There's no difference here. Now we want to focus on another principle here. That is the difference between the giants and the humans. What you find the initial, initial inference here 
is that there was an overlap in which giants and humans dwelt together. Hmm. Deuteronomy, third chapter, verse 7 to 13. We want to take a look at the people called the Amorites. They are mentioned several times, both by Elohim and YHVH and uh, Moses, Joshua. Verse 7, but all the cattle and the spoil of all the cities we took for a prey to ourselves. And we took at that time out of the land of the two kings of the Amorites, the land that was on this side, Jordan, from the river of Arnon unto Mount Hermon, which Hermon, the Sidonians call Sarion, and the Ammonites call it Shinir. All the cities of the plain, all Gilead, all Bashan, unto Selka, in Idri, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan. Now, Og is an Amorite. Og is also a giant. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Is it not in Rabbah of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof four cubits, the breadth of it, after the cubit of a man. <clears throat> In this land, which we possessed at that time, from Aor, which is by the river Arnon, half Mount Gilead, and the cities thereof gave I unto the Reubenites and to the Gadites. And the rest of Gilead and all Bashan, being the kingdom of Og, gave I unto the half-tribe of Manasseh. All the region of <coughs> Argob, with all Bashan, which was called the land of giants. So that whole region was under the possession of the giants. Og was the last remnant of the giants to be destroyed. Og and Sion were both called Amorites. What we find here, the inference is that um, Sion was not a giant, he's an Amorite. Og was a giant, he's an Amorite. What does that mean? That means that you had a dwelling of humans and giants that were co-procreating within a people. And we see further evidence of this. We're talking about giants and humans having sex. Yep. Yes. You can see that from Cain. Yes. Now we find Scripture indicates giants intermingled with humans after Israel entered the Promised Land. So there was a commingling before, commingling after. Turn to Second Samuel 21. We're going to read verses 15 to 22. <coughs> We're going to read about uh, the Philistines. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. And David went down and his servants with him and fought against the Philistines. David waxed faint. Now the Philistines are 
human. Pandemics. But note what it talks about here. In Ishibanab, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, he being girded with a new sword thought to have slain David. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, secured him and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle that thou quench not the light of Israel. It came to pass, after this, <clears throat> there was again a battle with the Philistines, Philistines at Gob. Then Sibikai, the Hushite, slew Saf, which was of the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Ethnian, the son of Jerihogim, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was then a battle in Gath, where there was a, great, a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers, on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the brother of David, slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath, and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Now the inference is, they lived with the Philistines. They are called the sons of the giant. Goliath was the champion of the Philistines. Goliath identified with the Philistines. He had four other brothers. The father was in the midst of the Philistines. Now why would these giants identify with a human nation? One reason, one reason only. Their mother was human. The giant, he had intercourse with a human woman and sired five sons. It does never talk about the mother, it talks about the sons of the giant. The giant lived with the humans. They grew up as a family, identified with the culture of the Philistines. They had the gods of the Philistines, the whole shot. So let me quickly ask you a question, going back to Genesis 6 4. Mm -hmm. The daughters of men, would they have included uh, giants? They would be, they would be uh, uh, basically considered crossbreeds. Mm. The father was not a giant, the mother was. Cain was human. But the woman was a giant, they lived with giants in a giant culture, economy. So the men of renown could only have been the giant from the first sentence, and not giants who were coming up from the daughters of men. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. These were pure giants. Yeah. They lived, uh, they lived, you can see they lived in families, the Gergesites and mm -hmm. Zumzims and all the rest of these. These are races of giants, lived in giant culture, did not identify with the humans at all. They got run out. <clears throat> so the inference here is you had a crossbreeding consistently between humans and giants. <clears throat> and this had a significant influence on the race of the humans, all the way down to David's time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the inference of um, scripture is the giants will be one of the races that come back to the surface during the tribulation period.